Okay. Uh, I'll continue. So now we are uh, entering a new chapter, and this chapter is about the data pre-processing, but it will be focusing on the aggregation and grouping. Okay. So sometimes our data is too broad or very, okay. and we want to aggregate or we want to group by some of the particular attributes. You already learned the essential of analysis of large data, like some mean, okay, median, minimum, maximum. And this is this will show you a single number. Okay. And this will give you an insight into the nature of potentially large data set. Okay. So in this section, we'll, we'll, we will explore aggregation in pandas and it is from simple operation on what what we have seen on numpy arrays so if you see in the numpy arrays yeah we have very simple way but in this uh, chapter we will do more sophisticated operation it is more sophisticated operation based on the concept of group by before i move into the aggregation i would like to teach you about lambda okay. there is one thing about uh, python so there are many examples in the internet they use lambda so i think i need to explain to you about lambda as well so simply put a lambda function is just like a normal python function except that it has no name when defining it. Okay, so lambda is representing a function. Do you still remember function? Function. So if you like def, okay, when you define a function name, def, for example, uh, display. Okay, I want to display my name, and then yeah, you want to print. Yeah, something let's say Bernardo. So this is the example that we had in the first part. Okay. So lambda is the same with this function, but the difference is we have no name to define it. So it is contained in one line of code. So you just contain in one. Usually it is in one line. Okay. So let's see. I have x and then x will be uh, lambda a. Okay. So it means I have an argument a. Okay. So when I put the argument a, then I will uh, do a plus 10. So whenever I put like x 5, so this is the argument. Okay, so this is the argument. If I put this on five, then five plus ten, then the result will be fifteen. Okay. What about if I change to six? Then of course, yeah, it will change to sixteen. What about if I change to seven? Yeah, it is 17. Okay. Yeah, just let me get back to five. Okay. I have another lambda. So in this case, I have lambda A, comma B. Then it means I have two arguments. So I can put x five, comma six. What is the function here? It is A multiplied by B. Then we have five multiplied by six. So the result will be 30. What if I have another lambda with three parameters? Yeah, that's possible. Okay. So I have A, B, and C. <clears throat> so what is the function here? I need to add all those numbers, A, B, and C. So if I have three numbers, 5, 6, 2, then I will 
to the summation. Five plus two plus six. Uh, five plus six plus two. So the result will be thirteen. So uh, yeah, we need to uh, check this one based on the idea that the data can be coarse green or fine green. What is the meaning by coarse green and what is the meaning by fine green? Coarse green is the data with larger subcategories. Let's say you have the data which is daily or you have the data weekly or you have the data monthly. Okay. So this is the idea of our, the aggregation. Okay. Background for aggregation. So if the data is daily, yeah, you can uh, make it fine if you have another data. Okay. So the data can be in the smaller category, which is hourly, minutely, or secondly. Okay. So if I have a lot of data in every hour, but it's very huge to analyze the data, then I can aggregate into daily, for example. If I have the data in minutes, maybe the row, there are so many data, and I want to aggregate into the bigger data, or you can say the hourly. So yeah, we call this is the coarse screen if it is in the larger subcategories, and we can call it fine green if it is in the smaller categories. Coarse green and fine green data input numerical and categorical data. Okay. For example, in the numerical or time-based data, we have like how many bike trips in one day? Or you can ask how many bike trips in one hour? Okay. So for example, you are in uh, I don't know, Hangang, okay, and then you stay in one position and you watch bike. Okay, so you can check in one hour how many bikes passing by, and then after you collect all the data in one day, you can check how many bike trips in one day. Okay, that's uh, we call as the time piece data, or we can also use, for example, in the category piece data. Let's see how many male visitors are there in the shopping mall. And how many people do the takeaway in the lunch time in our restaurant? So yeah, when we do this one, yeah, we can like aggregate. Maybe we want to just uh, check the takeaway, not the dine-in. Okay. So that's also another kind of fine green. So uh, later on, uh, there will be some uh, function that I want to compare. So I will explain about the display magic function. <laughs> I call it this is magic function because uh, we need to compare some parts. If you still remember, yeah, when you do with your uh, assignment or with your exam, yeah, you need to call all the necessary library. Okay. So this is the library of Matplotlib, and then the result of the Matplotlib can be inline. <coughs> and then you use NumPy, Pandas, Seaborn, and uh, if you need to use some data set. Okay. So this is the basic library. And for this uh, example, I would like to use the class. Uh, I hope that uh, you understand the object oriented. Okay. When I taught the computer programming, I taught in Java, but the concept about the class is similar. So I'm trying to use the class in Python or this one. So a class can consist many function to describe the behavior of an object. Okay. I do not want to explain about the class here, but I will just use one class 
the class name is display. Okay. And yeah, we have some objects that we need to define here. So in the class, we can have many functions. The first function is the initial function. Okay. The initial function. Or in Java, we call it constructor. <clears throat> so this is the constructor. So the constructor will check all the arguments. So in this case, the arguments will be in the form of objects. And there are two functions. The first is to see the representation in HTML. And the other is to see the representation in the other format. I think you don't need to understand all those things because this is just for the convenience to put all the graph in the same template. Okay, uh, in this example, I will use the tips data. I guess last time we already learned about this tips data. <coughs> You have the total bill, you have the tip, and then we have the sex to represent the gender of the customer. And whether the customer is smoker or not, they, we have Sunday, uh, we have Friday, Thursday, and Saturday. The time, we have diner, dinner and lunch. And the size, we have two, three, and four. So I want to describe, okay, you know, this is the first step. Okay. So uh, maybe next week I will give you uh, another assignment, okay? Yeah, I think in this class, it will be good to give you assignment rather than online quiz, because if you just do with the quiz, yeah, all those things are related with the programming. So it's better for you to practice, okay? Uh, yeah, I will give you another kind of assignment to handle this kind of issue with the aggregation and the missing values. So I will post later in the e-class about that one. Uh, so in order to describe this all function, yeah, you need to use the include all. So here we have the data as much as 244. And if it is uh, numeric, you cannot see the unique, you cannot see the top, and you cannot see the frequency. But yeah, you can see the other elements like mean, standard deviation, minimum, and so on. Okay, I think you already know this one. Yeah, I want to describe the data, but before I describe the data, let's remove the missing value. And okay, I don't have any missing value because the data is still 244. Then it's good. Okay. But when you do your exam and when you do your assignment, yeah, there will be some missing values and you need to handle it. Okay. Now I would like to find the mean. Okay, in this case, I want to know what is the average of the total bill. Okay, the average of total bill is $19.7. And yeah, let's try to find out the simple aggregation. So in the earlier, we explored some of the data aggregation available for NumPy. As with one dimensional NumPy array, the Panda series aggregates return a single value. So if it is NumPy, yeah, it is in the form of array. But if it is in the Panda, we have the series. Do you still remember? What is series? Series, okay, one dimension, good. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true, okay, good. So the series is one dimension, only one column. 
Okay. If the data frame, we have multiple columns. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good. So the summarize function in pandas, yeah, we have count. So we can know how many items that we have, how, how many rows. And then you can see first and last. So we want to see the first item and the last item. We can see the min and the median. We can find the minimum and the maximum. We can find the standard deviation and variation. And we can see the mean absolute deviation. We can see the product of all items and we can sum. So these are all the methods for data frame and the series object. Now, if we can just do like the column, okay, if we want to calculate the column and we want to do the summation, okay, yeah, you can just call the column and then sum. Or like what we did before, I want to find the mean. I want to find the average of the total bill. So you can just call the column and then mean. Yeah. To go deeper into the data, single aggregates are often not enough. So the next level of data summarization is the group by operation. It allows you to quickly and efficiently compute the aggregates on subset of data. Okay, so let's see. We have group by. Okay, this is a very powerful function. So, in the simple aggregation, it can give you a flavor of your data set, but often we would prefer to aggregate conditionally on some label or index. So, we will use the group by operation. The name group by comes from a comment in. SQL language. So it is perhaps more illuminative to think of it in terms of the first coin by Hedwig Wickham and Arstad. So they uh, actually they have the inspiration from the split apply combine. Let's see. The idea is when we have the data, we can do splitting. And after we split, we can apply what kind of function? Let's say you want to sum, or you want to mean uh, find the average, or you want to calculate the standard deviation, or you want to calculate the median, and so on. And then after that, you will combine it. The splitting, it is based on the column that you want to check. So there are at least three steps. Split, it is breaking up and grouping the data frame depending on the value of specified key. And the apply involves some function. So it can be the aggregate or the transformation or filtering. Okay. And the combined steps will merge the result of this operation into an output array. Okay, so these steps is the group by steps. So let's see. If I want to group by by sex, I want to group by by the gender. But oops, what happened? It's just error. Why? Because you just group everything with the sex, but there is no operation. So the data frame, okay, we have the data frame group by, but it should have a written value. So the written value is, uh, it is the object is where the magic is. You can think of it as a special view of data frame. So there's another special view of data frame and yeah, which is poised to dig into the group, but does not actual computation until the aggregation is applied. So this aggregation means this aggregation function. So what is the function? Mean or sum or average and so on. 
So the to produce a result, we can apply an aggregate to this data frame group by object. It means when you group by, there's an object and you need to do more thing. What is the more thing for this one? Yeah, you need to calculate this on the function, whether you want to use mean, you want to use median, or you want to use uh, maximum, minimum, then you will see that this is the mean. Yeah, you can see if you change this to uh, maximum. Then, oh, I see that the male give uh, 50 in the maximum. Female give 44 in the maximum. If I change to minimum, yeah, you can see that the minimum female give three dollar and male give seven dollar. Okay. So this is the function that you can use based on the group by. Some is just one possibility here. You can apply virtually and common pandas and numpy aggregation function as well as virtually and valid data flip operation. Okay, what does it mean? Let's see. Uh, oops, I think I miss. Oh, I think this is the explanation that uh, similar. Okay. Sorry, I think just skip this one. Okay. So we can do the group by with the column indexing. Okay. What does it mean? Oops, why I doing the same? Oh, okay. We can do with the column indexing. It means I do not want to see all the columns. So I want to see only the column total view. But again, this is the data frame group by. So you need to uh, use another function. Okay. So we can select only a series. So we can select only one column. Okay. And after we select a column, yeah, we can do another group by. Of course, we need to do the computation, mean, minimum, maximum, median, and so on. So if I do with this one, so the group by sex and the total bill median, then I want to see the median only on the column total bill and it is grouped by, by sex. You can do the iteration over the groups. Okay. So the group by objects supports direct iteration over the group, returning its group as a series or data frame. Let's see. Uh, I want to group by the column on D. Okay? And then, yeah, I want to know about the shape. Do you still remember what is shape? What is ship? Ship, uh, comma, row and column. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I want to know how many row. Okay, index and column. Okay, that's also good. Okay, so I, I want to know how many data are available on Thursday. How many data are available in Friday? How many data are available in Saturday and Sunday? Okay, so 62 rows and seven columns in Thursday. 19 and seven in Friday, 87 and seven in Saturday and 76 and seven in Sunday. So I use this format. Okay. I hope you can easily understand this one. So I have method and group okay. so it means i want to uh, use the method and the group the method means the data that i will get from this grouping and group means later i want to see the shape and here 
I want to uh, print. After I print the first, there should be a space. Okay. There should be a space after the first text. And next, you will see the result from this one. Okay. So that's just the formatting with the text. Okay. So this can be useful for doing certain things manually. So it is often much faster to use the built-in apply function. Yeah, we can use the apply function manually, but the group by is more widely used. Okay. We can have dispatch method. Yeah. So the dispatch method uh, means uh, we can uh, do more things with the group by. So we can pass through and call the groups where they are in the data frame or in the series. And then you can describe methods of data frames to perform a set of aggregation that describe each group in the data. So like this one, yeah. I want to check, I want to describe the data on the total bill. So the column total bill, and I want to group by based on the day. So here you can see that on Thursday, yeah, there are 62 data. And then on Thursday, the average is 17. On Friday, the average is 17. On Saturday, the average is 20. And on Sunday, the average is 21. Oh, okay. Then on Sunday, the total bill is the highest among the other day. Okay. And the maximum, yeah, we can see the maximum appears on Saturday. The minimum appears on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. So when you do the analysis, yeah, when I give you this kind of uh, assignment later, uh, you need to do something like analysis. The highest mean, uh, there, so there are, maybe I can say like there, there are at least four analysis from this one. There are uh, maybe Saturday is the highest data among other day. Okay, and then the total bill, the average of total bill on Saturday, oh, sorry, on Sunday is the highest among other days. And then the minimum total bill occurs on Saturday and the maximum total bill occurs on Saturday. Okay, so I expect you to do like this kind of analysis whenever I give you question about this aggregation. Okay. Okay, so let's just do a simple learning check. What is the difference between aggregation and grouping using group by? Okay, um, because maybe because of the time limitation, yeah, this aggregation is just simply like the aggregation in the NumPy. Okay, it is only for one row. But if we are doing with the group by, we can have more aspect like group by with one column, and then we can check with another column. Yeah. Most probably this is categorical, and most probably this is numerical. In group by there are three steps. What are they? Okay, we have apply, split, and combine.
Okay. So we can do this group by with another uh, function like filter, transform, and apply. Okay. The preceding discussion focused on aggregation to combine operation, but there are more options available. So in particular, group by objects have aggregate, filter, transform, and apply. And this methods oh, efficiently implement a variety of useful operation before combining the group data. So let's use the tips data frame again. Okay. Now with this aggregate, yeah, you can define what the measure that you want to show. If you use describe, yeah, if you use describe, you will see all of the measures. You will see including the count, you will see the standard deviation, you will see the uh, percentile 25, 50, and 75. Okay. But if you put all those things in your result, sometimes it is meaningless. So I want to show only the important part. For example, yeah, I can define with this one, min, with the single quote. I can also use the NP function, which is from the NumPy. And I want to use the median. Or I can just use the very simple string, maximum. So yeah, you can use any of this option. Okay, so I give you three different ways, but actually they are uh, the same. So we can see the total bill, minimum, median, and max. We can see the minimum, median, and max for the tip. And we can see the minimum, median, and maximum for the size. Okay. And if I want to see some aggregate, and this is more specific, okay. I want to see the group by day, and let's do the aggregate and put the total bill as the minimum and let's say the size as the maximum so you have very specific focus i want to know if the maximum is six but the total bill is the minimum is seven so it means there are many people who are coming yeah so they are the, the highest group is six but the minimum the seven, okay, yeah. Maybe this is still not showing anything, but you can think more. What about this operation that will fit for your analysis? Now, yeah, I use the display function, like what I already explained in the first part. <coughs> we can filter. A filtering operation allows you to drop the data based on the group properties. For example, if we want to keep all the groups in which the standard deviation is larger than some critical value. So if I know the standard deviation, but if the standard deviation is higher than the confidence, our confidence value, then I want to show it. So I have a function filter. And I put a, uh, I put an argument here, and the written value will be based on the total bill. Let's check the standard deviation. And if the standard deviation is greater than twenty, let's show it. I use the display function that I, uh, sorry, the display class. Okay, in the first part, I use the display class. And now I have one, two, and three. So I have three objects. Okay. So the first object is the common data. 
So I just want to see heads. And then the tips group by day and standard deviation. Okay, I want to see all the data and group by the day, and I want to see the standard deviation. And the last one is I want to see the tips data group by day and I want to filter it with the filter function. Okay. So if I do this one, oops. Ah, I think I didn't run the first one. Sorry. That moment. I think I didn't run this. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, now it works. So you can see that the tips head, it shows all the data. Tips group by day, standard deviation. We show all the standard deviation and tips group by filter. It doesn't show anything. Okay, why? Oh, because of the standard deviation, there is no standard deviation more than 20. Okay. So maybe yeah, if you want to check this one, maybe you want to hmm, let's say one, then yeah, you can see more like this one. If the standard deviation is more than one, every data is available here. What about if the standard deviation is more than five? Oh, okay, everything is still here. Okay. So there is no data that is more than standard deviation 20. This filter function should return a Boolean value specifying whether the group passed the filtering. Here, because the group A does not have the standard deviation greater than, oh, sorry, 24. So it is dropped from the result. Yeah. Is there any four? Yeah. So everything is still uh, on the control. The standard deviation is very small. Okay? So if it is more than 10, yeah, there is no data. That's about the filtering. So you can do not only based on the standard deviation, you can change either min or you can change to minimum, maximum, and etc. What about if we want to transform? Okay. While aggregation must return a reduced function of the data, transformation can return some transform version of the full data to recombine. So for such information, the output is the same shape as the input. So a common example is to center the data by subtracting the group wise mean. Okay, what does it mean? Let's see. You can see this is the head of the data. And then, yeah, I know that the total bill average is this amount. Okay. And yeah, I want to check the total bill health like this one. And yeah, if I want to check the average the average of the total bill based on day okay then you can see this one now i want to change if the value of the aggregation of the total bill okay, i would like to change with this function So I want to transform this data. Okay. So this data is means the mean. Okay. So I want to transform what we get the data based on the mean of the total bin. Okay. Can you understand? If we have the day, so I don't know what is the day of the first data. Yeah, this total bill is 16.99. Okay. And I want to minus 
with the mean. Maybe the first data is the, the first data is Sunday. Okay, so it means what is the average of Sunday? Yeah, 16.99 minus 21.41. Okay, 16.99 minus 21.41, and we get minus 4.42. Okay, can you understand? So we want to transform the total bill with respect to the mean. And the mean will be based on the mean according to the day where this data belongs to. So if this data belongs to Sunday, then we will minus the data with the mean on Sunday. If the, this data is on Saturday, then we will minus the mean with the data on Saturday. So every row will be different. Yeah, if you want to use only the very simple uh, uh, for all the data, okay, so you can use this one. It means we will do the transformation with the lambda. We will minus with the min according to the day for all the numerical values. But this one, yeah, of course, yeah, the size, if we want to calculate the mean, of course, there will be a decimal values. So that's why we have decimal value like this. When we deal with the apply method, okay, we have filtering, we have transform, and if we deal with the apply, yeah, it applies arbitrary function to the group result. So the function should take a data frame and return either a pandas object, data frame, a series, or scalar. And the combined operation will be tailored to the type of output written. Okay, so let's see this apply method. I want to calculate the percent. Okay. What is the percent? So I want to create a new column. And uh, the percent will be 100 multiplied by the tip divided by the total bill. Okay. So, oh, sorry. I need to run. And then, yes, I have the tip percent. So the tip percent will is 100 multiplied by total bill and tip. So uh, I change this to data one. Okay. Mm, we have this data one, and I want to make the normality of the data. So the data one will be divided by equal to the tip percent of mean. Can you understand? Uh, it's almost the quiz time. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I, I will explain this one uh, in the other section. Okay, so I think I need more time to explain this one. 